Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Messages from the Heart reading. So this is going to be a big reading, I think. <laughs> so if this is your first time with me, if you're not familiar with me, I am a healer and I am going through heart stuff right now, um, physically, emotionally, energetically, all of it. So I'm just letting you know that this this reading I can already feel is going to reach pretty deep, um, but I also have faith that it will, this energy will be made available to those who resonate with it and who need it. But anyway, <laughs> you are so welcome here. My name is Meredith and this is my heart-centered business called The Healing Hummingbird. And on Wednesdays, I love to share spirits messages. And in this case, um, a little energetic healing as well. So, um, as you see before us, we have uh, three different groups. If you already know um, what group is calling to you, feel free to go ahead and click the timestamp listed below, and I will see you at the top of your reading. If you still would like some time to meditate with these cards, I would love to do a breathing exercise with you. So I'm just going to place my hands over my heart. I invite you to do the same. Let's inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. And exhale out. One more time. Inhale in. And exhale out. just feel yourself relax into this beautiful emerald supportive energy almost cradling you like a child really relax into that mother earth energy allowing it to expand and embrace you inviting your angels ancestors spirit guides for the highest good to come near for this healing reading, we ask which group holds our messages from the heart. Just being open to how that message may fall on your heart. You may see, hear, feel, or just know that it's group one, two, or three. Or you may be drawn to one of the heart-shaped crystals that I have. So for group number one, I believe this is Chrysocolla. For group number two, we have Mint Larimar. For group number three, I believe this is Amazonite. All right, so we should have our groups selected. I did want to add that at the very end of this video, um, this will be time stamped as well. Um, for those who are interested and give me permission to connect to your energy, I will be offering a heart healing session. So I will see you shortly at the beginning of your reading. For those of you who choose group number one with the Chrysocolla heart, let's get your messages from your heart. Um, so we are going to start with the main theme that your heart would like to talk to you about. And then we're going to get plenty of information on how to um, support this healing process and allow it to happen. I feel like group number one is working through some karmic lessons that they are aware of. I'm interested to see um, what comes out as your first card that your heart wants to talk to you about. And for you, we have love number one. Aphrodite, I call to thee to bring a true love here to me. Yeah, I feel like you're working through some relationships. 
Um, there might be some stuff that's coming up from the past to revisit you, um, but it feels like you're aware of these different cycles that are going on. Um, maybe things are tending to repeat for you in relationships. Like, oh, I thought I was different this time. I thought I would end up with the right person. And um, again, this lesson is showing up. So I knew one group was going to be a relationships group. So I have the archetypes deck out. So let's go ahead and just get into it. Um, I would love to know how you're showing up in these relationships. So we will get um, your energy and the other's energy to better understand the lesson. Um, so we can lovingly tell the universe, we're done with this. <laughs> because right away, your heart is telling you, you deserve love, you deserve love. I want to feel love, please let me be loved. So already I'm getting a message that maybe there's an unconscious block there. There could be some self-sabotaging going on. Difficulties with communication. Okay. That feels very right. So let's see the dynamic that you are coming up against in <laughs> romantic relationships. So we have child magical. Oh, I love this one. Seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things. The belief that everything is possible. Also prone to pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles. Believing that energy and action are not required for growth. Listen, this is nothing to be ashamed of if you are identifying with this. This deck has described me as this to myself before. Um, and I actually invited my inner child to this reading. So no shame. That might be why she's here to kind of keep you company. All right. And then we also have Hermit. Seeks solitude to focus intently on inner life. Serves personal creativity. Also withdraws from society out of fear or negative judgments of others. Refusing to help those in need. Okay. Okay. I definitely feel now it can be the other. You could see yourself as both of these potentially. Um, I'm feeling you as child magical. Um, maybe seeing love as so romantic and it's a big whirlwind, but then you get caught up with these people who are quite reclusive. Um, it, it feels like in the past with past partners, um, and this is a very particular energy. Um, I'm really feeling the combination of these two. I'm not saying that either of these are good or bad. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that. It seems like this person might come off as kind of secretive or mysterious um, or just introverted or shy. And you are very much not. You're very bubbly, sweet, childlike in a good way. Um, and you really believe in love. So the hermit would really love child magical at first. Um, however, it's not a very balanced feeling energy. In fact, let's go ahead and get the lesson that is manifesting here between these two energies. So it's, I'm hearing push and pull. So it's almost like you start out like child magical in romantic situations. And then you eventually turn into the hermit and then you kind of wait until you get your child magical back for love again. Oh, wow. And this is a very specific message. You know, if this is not resonating, please feel free to pick another group. Um, I did ask for specific messages from the heart um, for the highest potential healing for the highest good of all as well. Okay, so for group number one, the lesson, gratitude. I am thankful for this life and the opportunities that it presents. Wow, I've never gotten this message before. I have never gotten this message before about this card. And I don't say this lightly, group number one, but you must be a really unique and special individual. I feel like you almost get carried away with gratitude. Again, I've never <laughs> gotten that message before. So it's almost like, and I'm seeing this little child who's caught a lightning bug in her hands and she's looking at it and treasuring it like it's the most incredible thing that she's ever seen in her life. 
Um, and she just knows that it won't be around for long and she'll chase it and she'll chase it and she'll try to catch it again. She wants that feeling again. And it's almost like that's the way you feel about love. But spirit is saying, this is very sweet. This is beautiful that group number one feels this way. However, the firefly energy inherently does not last for very long. Um, you know, it's meant to blink. It's meant to be here and then gone. A moment of, it's it's like almost a miraculous moment. I'm hearing that. Um, so it feels like, it feels like you're very grateful for love and very grateful for one-on-one -on -one connections in your life. I wonder if you've suffered a great loss um, in your time here in this lifetime. It's kind of altered your perception of love to be sort of extreme. So I feel like you may have gone through times in your life where you just kind of didn't really believe love was possible or sustainable, um, or at least not present in your life. And then there's other times where you feel like you could be in love with anybody, anytime. It could just happen anytime and it's everywhere. So I'm really seeing this these extreme highs and extreme lows with love. And it feels like it has to do with what you believe about love. And I feel like your heart is telling you that you deserve love. Not only that, you embody love. You are love. You are love. You don't have to chase it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to keep it and hold on to it as hard as you can. You don't have to run from it either. It feels like there's really big reactions. You must you must have had a very colorful love life. Um, either that or you've had like one, one serious partner and that's it. It just feels like you feel very deeply and very um, full bodied. It feels like you really feel it when you're in love, really feel it. So there could be times where you go into these extreme modes of protection. So maybe if you suffered a loss, you're like, I just don't think I could bear that again. I don't think I could do it again. You could have gone through a long time by yourself. So they're wanting to make sure that we really ground your heart in gratitude, but a grounded type of gratitude, not a gratitude that feels like infatuated and fleeting. So I hope that's making sense. It's almost like getting so caught up in the whirlwind of it all. You might even have created whirlwind situations for yourself, or you might, might be very enticed or attracted to situations like that. It's like when you fall, you fall very hard. So we really want to ground that energy so that you can come home to yourself at the end of the day. So you don't get so tied up and entangled in this other person that you almost lose yourself. We want to help you come home. I'm hearing that very, very clearly. So let's get some tarot for you. Let's see what's going on with you currently in your heart. Okay, so we got some beautiful... Um, messages about love and relationship spirit what else is going on with group number one in their heart space what does their heart want them to know could you please clarify these dynamics how they might be showing up now this almost feels kind of like in the past um so yeah okay we have the hermit we have taurus energy showing up here what else spirit what is going on with group number one what does their heart want them to know Wow, having to be very patient with the shuffle. <laughs> All right, we have a Sag card out now, Sagittarius. I feel like people are very important to you. Oh, wow, and then we have the Five of Pentacles. Well, I want to make sure you can see it all. <laughs> Bear with me just a moment. Okay, so hopefully this imagery is good here. Let's 
do this. Okay, so with the Hierophant over here, again, this would be Taurus energy. I feel like you've really sought structure in your life. It could be that um, in childhood, the concept of love did not feel structured or it felt very ungrounded in some way. So it feels like um, based on that past experience, you really sought structure. You might also be um, have come from a religious background. I'm seeing like pews in a church, um, maybe even just a physical pew um, is symbolic for you in some way. Wow, and I'm getting this really hot and cold energy here. So that that is kind of affirming the message I was getting earlier with Child Magical. It's like when you fall, you're so in love. And then when you're not, it feels so lonely and alone. It's like very extreme feelings. And I feel like that's because your inner child, I feel, is in your heart chakra and so if you haven't done inner child work recently i feel like they want to come out again um, so please do look into that there's meditations you can do to invite your inner child into your everyday life i feel like they are really craving that to be with you um, and one of the exercises you can do is a visualization um, where you visualize yourself um, you know at a at a significant age in your life maybe somewhere between the ages of three and ten and you tell your child self everything you needed to hear at that age. So I feel like your inner child is really craving some quality time. So please, please do that. Yeah, and in the in the future position here, I'm kind of hearing what's in it for me. Should I just cut my losses? Do I just, am I just so far gone in this journey that like I'm not going to have this again, this romantic love? And here in the present um, with this Knight of Wands, I feel like you might be looking at your past thinking, huh, how did that work out for me? What do I want to do moving forward? But it feels like there's a big life change going on in the present that's kind of motivating um, a new start. It's like you're craving a new start, but you're not quite sure like what to start, <laughs> if you even want romance, if, if you're even interested in that, how you would go about that. I definitely hear, I'm definitely hearing that you don't want to be hasty. So I don't know if you felt um, either like you've been way too hasty in the past, or if that is something that you've been so afraid of being like, I don't want to be reckless. I don't want to jump into things. So maybe you have really been extremely conservative over here with the Taurian energy in the Hierophant. Again, I feel like... Um, it must be something from childhood, um, really left you craving structure. So in the places in life where you didn't see it, I feel like you built it at all cost. All right, let's go ahead and start getting some advice for you, group number one. And I feel like not many people would know this about you. You've probably really kept this to yourself that this is how you feel about love. Okay. I know you saw that. We already got one piece of advice coming out real fast. And let me clarify, if you are in this group and you're like, oh man, I think I picked the wrong group, you could potentially be in a relationship right now, but it just feels like there's this lonely feeling that you might be afraid of taking over. This feels like a fear, like a projected fear into the future. It feels like an anxiety, if I'm honest. Okay. All right, let's see what your advice is. So we have North Node step out of your comfort zone. Oh yeah, so this the North Node is all about um, 
I mean, you can kind of interpret it as like your North Star um, or your life's purpose. What you're here to work on in this lifetime very likely has to do with love, understanding love, understanding relationships and how you work within them. Hey, we also have for you conclusions are within reach full moon eclipse oh i love that for you and then lastly we have for you meditate and contemplate new moon in pisces i believe we just had a full moon in pisces if you were watching this at the time that the video is posted but pisces is a lot okay so I feel like you're really going through it emotionally. You might be feeling the need to purge and cry emotionally. Um, and I'm, I'm hearing that your heart just needs to do that. Um, so you might've been someone who's really locked that down tight in life. Maybe you just don't cry very much, um, or you might just not enjoy crying and you know, that's okay. Um, but I feel like your spirit guides, your heart, your inner child are really asking you to step out of your comfort zone and look a little deeper into these cycles in love, cycling between believing everything is possible and, you know, retreating completely, isolating yourself, saying, I don't deserve it. I don't want it. I can't take it. I feel like I could almost cry. I just feel like your energy is so beautiful. Your heart is so beautiful and gentle and feels so deeply. You're meant to feel deeply. You are, that's the way you are. That's the way you've always been. And I feel like an ancestor is here and I'm seeing a woman with dark hair and I feel like I feel like this is someone who really loved you in life. If this is resonating with you and you're wondering who this might be, I'm feeling maternal energy. And she's saying, I'm sorry you didn't feel safe enough to love and be loved while I was here. This really feels like childhood stuff, group number one. All right, so I don't know if something's bringing that up recently. Maybe something with a parent is making you kind of reflect on childhood a lot. Um, but please know that that maternal figure is with you a lot. You might even ask to see her sometimes and then be kind of disappointed if you don't perceive her in a way that you're expecting. But she's around you a lot. She loves you a lot and really wants you to be well. This is someone who's truly interacting with you for your highest good. And she's saying you are safe now to love and be loved in every capacity. It doesn't have to be romantic. You know, it can be anything. But especially yourself, okay? I feel like you put everyone in front of you. And it's time to love you. All right? Woo! So we're off to <laughs> a very strong start. Those were your messages if you chose group number one with this beautiful Chrysocolla um, crystal. I'm sorry if I blew out the lighting so that you could see the details of this gorgeous crystal. Um, but as I said in the intro, please feel free to fast forward to the end of this reading. Um, or at the end of all of the readings so that you can take part in the heart healing um, energy session that I'm going to provide at the end of everyone's readings. But thank you so much. It's been an honor to connect with you. I'm sending you so much love and I will see you next time. Bye. For those of you who choose group number two with the very large mint Larimar crystal, let's go ahead and get your messages from your heart. So first we're going to connect in, um, ask your heart what it would like to say, how it would like to express itself, um, and then we'll get plenty of information on how to support this heart healing and how to connect deeper. All right, so let's get started. For group number two, what does their heart want them to know? What is their heart saying? What are their messages from the heart? Ooh, my ears just started ringing. 
someone just stepped in here. So you've got somebody showing up for you. So this might be a pretty big message for you, okay? All right, we have for you psychic protection. Oh, that makes sense. Maybe a protector guy just came in here. Around me now a shield of gold protecting me strong and bold. Oh yeah, you are safe, group number two. You are safe. That is what your heart wants you to know is that it wants to feel safe and protected and held and loved. So I would highly recommend if you weren't already planning on it, please do join me at the very end of this video when I offer a heart healing energetic session for you. I feel like your heart space could really use it, but let's go ahead and see what lessons that you're working through so that we can help this energy kind of shake out. It feels quite stagnant, so I wonder if you are, if you have been activated in some kind of way, like, um, fight, flight, or freeze. And it's like, no, 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 let me, um, so this is interesting. I feel like that you have taken a very like aggressively protective stance over your heart. So maybe you really hold people at an arm's length, like, no, 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 get away from me. So maybe you met someone recently who really opens you in a way that scares you. Um, or you could be, and we'll get the lessons cards. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm, I'm hearing messages. Um, it feels like something externally kind of happened um, that made you trigger this almost like survival mode. Like, no, 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 we don't do that. We don't do that around here. <laughs> so what what is group number two? What are the lessons that they're working through? Okay. I also feel like um, you might want to look into a realignment um, because this is really driving me crazy. I wonder if um, small details um, uh, bother you as well or you really fixate on, on little details. Okay, so let's knock again. What lessons <laughs> for group number two? Oh, we have relationships. I am attracted to those people who serve my higher good. Okay, and then we also have for you health. I will honor the physical vessel that enshrines my soul. This is going to be a very specific message for only a few of you who are watching. So um, as always, these are general readings. So please take what resonates. Do not let anything else take from you. I feel like you might have connected with someone recently either because of a shared experience with physical health or or they entered your life and they are mirroring to you or you are mirroring to them a physical experience with their health. So an example would be um, you had COVID before, now they have COVID. Do you know what I mean? Or you had um, this situation where you had to stay at the ER. Now this person is having to stay at the ER. And it's almost like this is piquing your interest here. Like, what's going on with this person? Why are we mirroring each other's experiences? And I just feel like you're very analytical. Like, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? <laughs> um, again, that's only for... Um, that's a very specific message, so please do let that go if that doesn't resonate. Um, okay, Spirit, so how else could we interpret these, these lessons? Because I know that wasn't everybody. Healthy relationships. Okay, we have another relationships pile. All right, group number one was a relationships pile as well, so you might have felt drawn to that group. So... I knew we would have at least one relationships pile. I have the archetypes deck here. It's quite thick, it's hard to shuffle. So I would love to get how you are showing up in romantic relationships and how your other is showing up here. Because usually there's, when they bring up relationships, there's a cycle. There's a cycle that we can heal. And it definitely has to do with the fight, flight, or freeze reflex. I really feel that strongly for you. So what dynamic, what archetypes are showing up in group number two's relationships since we want to address the health of their relationships? Okay, first out we have hero slash heroine. So that would be, let's see if we can get this to focus, maybe passion for a journey of personal empowerment. 
Also, escapism and a false sense of heroism. Oh, interesting. If you are not familiar with the drama triangle, I highly suggest you look that up because at least one of the characters is here. In the drama triangle, we always have, um, who do we have? Oh, it's rescuer, it's not hero. Well, very similar. So we have um, bully, victim, and rescuer. So that's the drama triangle. And the rule is, if you find yourself standing on any of those points of that triangle, you got to get off. <laughs> we can't be doing that. So I wonder if you usually play one of those. Or maybe it interchanges. Okay. And then we have detective. Oh my gosh. Not what I was expecting at all. Great powers of observation and intuition. Desire to seek out the truth. Also voyeurism, falsifying information. Oh, wow. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. I just really was not expecting that. So maybe, maybe I'm feeling that so strongly. Um, because of you, I feel like maybe someone in your life who's very close to you kind of surprised you with this dynamic. Maybe you didn't expect this of them. Honestly, I feel if you're watching, I feel you as the detective, um, especially because we said here, great powers of observation and intuition, desire to, ste to seek out the truth. I definitely got that earlier, like air sign energy, big time, like Gemini and en energy, um, big time. Gen Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I hope I got that right. <laughs> oh, sometimes I know astrology and sometimes I don't. Um, I feel you as the detective. I feel like Hmm. But I feel like you might be pulling away from the hero archetype. It feels like you're really watching them and being observant of their behavior of like, what's this person's intention here? Do they just want to have an adventure? Um, do they want to save me or complete opposite? They've completely withdrawn and they're not there anymore. Um, so you just feel energetically like they've pulled back and you're like, what's going on? How can I figure this out? How can I analyze this data and put it together? However, I feel, um, that there's actually some advice here with falsifying information. I don't feel like you're doing that group number two, but they are bringing up this concept that the brain usually finds what it's looking for, or we usually find what we're looking for. Okay, so if you are looking for a reason for this person to be like messing up, you'll probably find it. Does that make sense? Or it could be that this could be a form of self-sabotage. You may not realize, um, you may not realize right away that you're doing this when you start doing this. And um, I just want to clarify, if this is you, you, you will know, okay? You will know in your heart and your gut that this feels right, okay? I'm not here to like, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not here to like rip on you or anything. So I just want to clarify, you will definitely, this will feel very right if it is you. Hmm. Yeah, it feels like there's almost this obsessive energy with trying to figure something out. It feels like there's a hot and cold element here as well, just as there was with group number one, but this is kind of in a different way. It feels like when this person's energy shines on you, like you just have, like the world is your oyster. It feels amazing. You feel like you're on the top of the world. So if this not if this is not someone that you're currently in union with, I feel like your energy is still intertwined. Um, 
I'm actually going to retract something that I said earlier because I insinuated that this is a pattern. I think this is a person, okay? I think this is a specific situation for you that your heart is asking you to relieve yourself from in some way. It feels like this is putting a lot of strain on you. You might be trying to figure out what are they thinking and feeling now? What are they doing? What are their intentions? Are they okay? I'm worried about them. I miss them. What are they doing? You know what I mean? It's like this circular thinking. Um, and all the detail in this image is like making me feel like you're trying desperately to put these pieces together. Um, and this is so tricky because I feel like, I mean, we have intuition and psychic written on both of these cards. I feel like you are gifted in that way, but that can be difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like it can be hard to separate your feelings from theirs, discern who's feeling what, um, especially if you are activated in the way I was picking up earlier, like fight, flight, or freeze. So you might kind of be scrambling, trying to get things together, maybe even mistaking other feelings as yours and trying to um, rationalize all of it. I feel like you're typically very, very logical. Um, even though you are very intuitive, you know, you can have both, of course, big air sign energy here. Okay. So you probably have that in either, um, uh, a lot of Mercury in your chart. I'm definitely seeing that planet um, or in your big three sun, moon, or rising. Okay, so let's get your tarot out. My gosh. How specific. Again, if this is not resonating, please feel free to choose another group. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, what does group number two need to know about this situation? What a, a strong dynamic. It feels magnetized in some way, almost like you can't help yourself. So does something happen to you where you feel like you have to protect yourself? Okay, we have the Queen of Wands. So we have fire sign energy here. Okay. Oh, we'll take those. We have strength. And then we also have the Eight of Wands. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like here you are over here as the detective being showered with the Eight of Wands. And that's just like you're getting nailed with a ton of messages all at once. Um, so very um, particular situation here. Um, I feel like we might need to bolster your energetic boundaries. I feel like we might need to talk to your protector guide and your doorkeeper. Um, just making sure that these messages, these energies are not intertwining with yours in times that are inappropriate or times that you don't want that. I feel like it's really influencing you a lot. Um, so an example of this would be like if you work at a call center, um, you would be very affected by the energy of the person who's calling when you answer. So it's really important for you to put up your golden bubble before you interact with anyone for the day, okay? I feel like that is part of what is kicking you into detective mode. Like, let me figure this relationship out. <laughs> What do I need to do next? Um, and this person I truly feel is doing their best. I feel like they are worried about your health for some reason um, and the health of the relationship. So if that if that was a question for you, um, you know, the the heart and um, your spirit guides want to comfort you on that. Um, this person really wants to help you regain strength. I feel like they can kind of see you... Um, it's interesting. It feels like from your perspective, you're trying to figure them out or they feel distant. They feel like they can feel you pulling away as well and, and becoming more observant. So a, a thing with air signs, and I know that this is all fire. <laughs> so, um, you know, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius uh, might be significant in this connection as well. Uh, but I'm really feeling air energy for, for you. Um, very logical, very fair and reasonable, usually. Um, but in this situation, I feel like the dynamic might feel cold. It might be perceived as cold and detached on the other side. So please be mindful of that, okay? Um, I have a lot of air in my chart as well. And I know 
that, well, now I know um, <laughs> that I have, I have a tendency to detach. Um, and it can be kind of surprising for, for some people who have not experienced that before. So let's get some advice for you. Um, of course, you know, the, the whole aim here is to help the heart heal. So I almost wonder if there's a cord cutting that you might want to do for the heart. Kind of to just release a shadow element of this. And I just heard release the need to know. So maybe this other person is dealing with something that they haven't told you yet. And I just heard someone real sassy kind of go, get it together. So... <laughs> I feel like you have someone on your spirit team who is pretty funny, or you might be pretty funny yourself. Ooh, okay, we've got some advice out for you. Um, first out, we have nothing will come of this situation. Void of course, moon. Yeah, there's nothing to um, there's nothing to discover here. All right, we also have for you your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. and also show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. There's that air energy as well, again. Right. I feel like this situation and your heart in particular is craving authenticity. So I feel like it feels like there's some kind of barrier in this situation, almost like someone is not allowed to go there. That's what it feels like. So I don't know if that was some kind of spoken or unspoken agreement, or there's some type of formal barrier in place. It feels like there's an obvious reason that you haven't opened up to this person about feeling this way. Maybe you feel like it would totally blow up if you did for some reason, or it would undo a lot of work that you did. Okay, that's what it is. I feel like um, in the past, you've really laid a healthy foundation for the relationship, really put in the work, um, and showed a lot of dedication. Capricorn is a hard worker, hard worker. And so it feels like maybe this is an old pattern, an old thinking pattern. Um, you might even suffer from like, you know, different types of overthinking. I'm not here to like uh, diagnose anybody, but of course, you know, if you're feeling if you're feeling that way, please do seek assistance in any way that feels best to you. Um, but it feels like you've you've made a huge effort to not um, inconvenience this person. And I'm hearing that nothing you're experiencing is inconvenient. Your feelings and thoughts are not inconvenient. Um, and your heart wants to be free to express itself. There we go. Wants to be free to be real, to just be real. So I feel like for group number two, um, I feel like, let, nope, let's get some abundance cards to see <laughs> your last advice and the outcome here. But I feel like we might need to have a conversation and I know that might feel horrifying um, and it might not be now, it might be later. Um, and you're so, so logical, you're so rational. You might want to wait until you're feeling very grounded in the mental body to approach this person and talk about it. But you both care for each other very, very much, okay? And um, I mean, the first message that came out for you is that you are safe, so it could be that the time is now to do this. Let's see. So we have sanctity and surrender. Okay. And then we also have divine flow. So I feel like it feels like you don't want to mess up. That's what it feels like. Um, and spirit saying your this connection is sacred. I feel like you met this person for a divine reason. Um, and honestly, surrender to divine flow. <laughs> I mean, that's a very um, clear message. 
a very clear message. But I feel like, so I mean, it sounds easy, but it's not. It's simple, but it's not easy, right? Um, so I feel like there's some work for you to do here to really connect with your heart, to really connect with and be able to feel your feelings. Do you know what I mean? So I wonder if you, um, you might have turned them off for a while. Maybe you were going through a really tough cycle with Capricorn. That's also Saturn energy. And Saturn is the planet of lessons and hard work. Um, and with health here, maybe you were experiencing, maybe it's your turn to go through the health thing and you might just be like totally exhausted. Okay, so please um, give yourself some grace. You don't have to do this right now, um, <laughs> but you are coming across this reading for a reason. Um, and your heart, I feel, is, is saying, can we please do this soon? Um, because it feels like the outcome of this, it, I mean, you're just going to be surrendering to divine flow. You probably are aware of all of this, that it's been long overdue. It needs to happen. Okay. I feel like you're going to feel better, better once you've done this. All right. So those were your messages. If you chose group number two with the mint Larimar, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm sending you tons of love. If you are interested in the heart healing session at the end of this video, please stick around for that. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. And for those of you who chose group number three with the Amazonite heart, let's get your messages from your heart. I actually feel like we want to start with tarot for this one. Um, and I find it interesting. Usually I'm very consistent with the way I do things. I don't know if you've noticed that uh, very methodical Gemini moon energy about me, but I've placed these hearts in different spots for every single reading. So it's very interesting. Um, right away, I feel like your heart wants to tell a story. So we're going to let it. Okay, I usually don't get a ton of tarot cards at one time, but I feel like there's a lot to say here. And as you can see, we already had a few come out. So let's break it down. We have the Three of Swords, the Magician, the Empress, the King of Wands. I feel like these are all to do with relationships. I mean, I guess that's not surprising in the heart. Okay, and I feel that we have two more. We have judgment. Wow. And we have the Ten of Wands. Okay. All right. So I feel like we are taking a look at the way you perceive heartbreak or even breaking up. Maybe the way things end in relationships for you. So I feel like, ooh, why do you feel fragmented to me? I feel like you feel fragmented. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Um, could you clarify this fragmented energy? Okay. So we have dissatisfaction down here. Oh, very interesting. I feel like you're really showing up str the strongest to me as the king of wands. And here you are looking at these, <laughs> these endings. All right. And looking at heartache, grief for people, for relationships, for situations. However... I feel like you have the tendency to end them yourself. I feel like, um, and four might be significant to you. Maybe you've had four very significant relationships. Um, but I feel like you'll get in, you'll go really fast. This is a, a Leo card, I believe. This is a, you know, a fire. So it could be um, Sag, Leo, Aries. You really take charge. I feel like you're not afraid to chase somebody. Um, and it's very exciting for you to be in love. However, I feel like at a certain point, and fire signs can be kind of notorious for this, when there's an imbalance, I don't want to generalize, you know, everybody makes their own choices at, at any given point in time. Um, there can be a tendency to run, to be a runner, or to leave someone before they leave you. You know what I mean? So it's like you might hit a wall in a relationship, 
you realize, oh, I don't want this anymore, or I'm, I just don't feel anything anymore, or this isn't giving me anything. Okay, this is very dissatisfied energy. Um, once you hit that, I feel like you're gone. Bye. Doesn't matter what's going on um, with the other person, with um, the situation. I feel like you will find a way to leave somehow. And so just like the other groups, I feel like something is happening right now that's having you re-examine all of that. Um, so I don't know if like an important date is coming up soon. Um, maybe something has happened with an important, an important relationship, um, from the past that's having you think about that person again and think about how you're showing up in these connections. Something's having you like kind of survey <laughs> your past. And I feel like you have a very colorful past. So I feel like you have a very strong ability to manifest and work with spirit. The magician here signifies that all of the bodies are aligned and you have all of your tools at your disposal. So that would be the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, the spiritual body. You have a, you are, you are able to align all of them towards one singular goal, create a very powerful energy to manifest something really big. So I feel like you might be working on your destiny right now, actually. For a while, it feels like your destiny was caught up in loving someone else. So maybe you felt very strongly like, I need to be with this person, this is my life's calling. It feels like that has changed somehow for some reason. Um, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so remember how I was saying you feel fragmented to me in this spread? I was trying to figure out who everyone was. I think you are all these people um, and you show up different to different situations or that might be how you like to think of yourself like, oh no, that was the old me. Um, you know, present version of me would not do that again ever, okay? So um, I feel like you're really striving for this magician energy. And honestly, it feels very aligned. It feels very powerful um, and like something that you could turn on right now. And I feel like that's actually your goal. Um, so if you were questioning that, please know that um, that is absolutely possible. And I feel like that's where you're ultimately being led through all of this. Um, sorry, I had to restart our music and even maybe even restarting um, some of the old process processes that you have gone through before. Um, so you might have thought, oh, no, I, you know, I already processed that emotion. I already sought therapy. I've had energy healings. Um, I've done all my work. It feels like some like we're going to need to look at something again from <laughs> from a different perspective or a different layer is coming up that's ready to come up right now. Another version of yourself um, is this empress energy, which is beautiful, divine, feminine. She's the embodiment of every queen in the deck. Um, she's very radiant and attractive. And it feels like there's something in your energy that's very magnetic, but it's magnetized like not the greatest situations for you. Um, you might have even felt like some of your past relationships have been a burden. Um, maybe even like financially, it feels like you're having to take care of everything by yourself. You might even become a caretaker for people. So this can also be mother energy, okay? And so your heart is already saying, I don't want to be a mom. I don't want to be someone's mom. <laughs> I want to, I want to really love and be loved in a way that is in alignment with who I truly am and what I'm truly here to do. So I wonder, wow, this is huge, powerful messages. Um, I wonder if you are realizing that that relationships in the past were either like a form of escapism or maybe the people that you were engaging with were not supportive of who you truly are. Um, it feels like you may have um, sacrificed a lot for other people, maybe even took on qualities that you knew they preferred kind of unconsciously. And so it feels like we are coming home to who we are 
and honoring life purpose. Okay, and we have for you love. I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. And then we also have fear. I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. Oh, wow. So you might have been in a lot of opposites attract kind of situations. Um, which, you know, can be very fun and exciting, um, very passionate, but it can end up becoming draining if, if it's unable to stay in a frequency that is balanced. It feels like you've had to do a lot of work to ground these relationships. It's almost like you were their therapist or something, or maybe you wanted to go to therapy and they wouldn't. I don't know. There's something about this. Um, let's get shamanic oracle for you. No other group had this. I'm feeling a really deeply spiritual energy coming from group number three. I just heard heart math. I don't know if you're into heart math. You might practice heart math. Um, or even seek it, right? Okay, here we go. Let's see what your shamanic oracle cards say. First, we have for you the owl number 39. And then we have standstill number 52. And lastly, we have 36 middle world. Okay, so the spiritual energy that I was feeling earlier really makes sense with standstill in the middle world. That's how, how I'm hearing that. So the middle world refers to our um, physical reality. Um, so we have the, the lower world, middle world, upper world, a few other levels. We don't need to get into all that. However, <laughs> it feels like... Um, it feels like you might be getting a little uh, restless or like, I want things to move forward in the physical world. It feels like you feel think you're able to perceive things going on in the upper world or higher levels of consciousness. But down here in the lower chakras, um, we're kind of hitting a wall. <laughs> and it feels like you're ready for what's next. You're ready to bring it in. You're definitely not afraid of love. I wonder if you might attract people who either are unavailable in some way or really struggle with opening up. You might have even viewed that as part of your life purpose at one time. I feel like um, I'm definitely getting an old soul energy from group number three. I feel like you kind of realized that you were healing people one-on-one -on -one through relationships. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have since looked into that, discovered, yeah, yeah, I definitely have these healing uh, qualities about myself, whether you're empathic, uh, whether you practice Reiki or some other type of um, healing art, you know, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you have to offer is truly beautiful. Um, but if you're unaware of that, early in your life, your door is just wide open for everyone who wants that beauty, who wants that healing to come in and just siphon it out of you. Um, and you know, you feel so open and loving. It's like, oh yeah, of course I want a relationship. Of course I want to be in love with you. And then they just suck you dry. And it's like, I feel like it just took you a while to realize what was going on. So um, I wonder if, if you grew up in um, a circumstance where adults around you were not really talking about like alternative forms of medicine or healing techniques. So it feels like I'm hearing like black and white, one track mind. So it could have been like a really religious background um, or just like a, we don't talk about that kind of situation. But it feels like now you're seeking and obtaining all of this knowledge. It feels like you're really evolving. But <laughs> again, spirit is talking about this concept of who you really are. Um, and this concept of coming home to yourself has come up a few times. So that's a, a universal message coming up. But you don't have to reinvent yourself for every relationship. Group number three. You've always been enough, always. In the first one you were. It's not your fault that it didn't work out. I don't know if you feel like it's your fault, I'm hearing that. 
It's not your fault that you're like this. I feel like you're very aware that you do this, but you like don't know what to do about it or... Let's start to get some advice out here. <laughs> Advice for group number three. Oops, I'm sorry, I just bumped that camera. It feels like we're shaking up your perspective. <laughs> um, so I feel like you are, you're taking time to reflect. You're really, here you are as this king kind of looking over um, your very colorful past <laughs> um, and wondering how will I reinvent myself this time? And it feels like spirit saying, no, we're not going to reinvent yourself. We're actually just going to accept you as, as you are. So we have communication is key, new moon in Gemini. You are good enough, full moon in Virgo. Didn't we just, no, we just had full moon in Pisces, but we're in Virgo season right now. So I feel like this standstill, this hanged man moment, this pause in time is meant to be used to show yourself that you are worth loving and being loved as you are. You can share love with someone as you are. You don't need to transform your physical form. You don't need to lose or gain any weight. You don't need to put on a new persona. You don't need to level up or anything. You know, I feel like you've really done a lot of work and it, there's almost this compulsion to continue working no matter what is going on. I'm seeing you kind of peeking down here like, okay, I'm bored, what else? Um, <laughs> so, with, I mean, there's a, there's a danger with that um, and that's a really Sagittarius moment. So I will own that for myself as well. So definitely no shade to you, but there's the, there there's a tendency to perhaps not fully integrate what we're doing. All right, so I'm hearing one step at a time. We'll do one thing at a time. And then when we fully integrated that, we'll move on to the next. And then we have meditate and contemplate. Yeah, I feel like there's a, a need to really take your time with what you're doing. And I'm hearing doing the right things. So I feel like you're doing the right things, but it might just be... We need more time. I feel like we need more time. Okay, let's get some divine abundance for group number three. For group number three, any last messages from the heart chakra, from the heart space? How can we help facilitate this healing and honor your life's purpose and who you truly are as group number three. Ooh. Grounded. Yeah, I definitely feel like we need to um, make sure your boundaries are really, really strong. And I'm almost hearing like, a, I know, I know, I, f I know you know. True offering. I feel like you are a true offering to this world. I feel like you came here for a really specific purpose to help a lot of people heal. That might be why you don't take um, relationships not working out personally. It feels like you're able to really detach and go, that was their journey and I helped them through that and this is my journey. And I feel like that's actually really beautiful. Um, that's why you're able to move on so fast. But again, spirit is just saying, we want to just help you integrate some of this. And then we have courage. Let me be courageously, let me be open to courageously take the steps that are shown. Remember one at a time. Also elephant energy could be very significant for you as well. I'm also feeling getting ancestors with the elephant. So I wonder if this might be, and then look at the bottom, we have signs. I feel like the elephant could be a sign of an ancestor for you of some sort, or just a, a, sig a signifier of some kind. Um, I'm also picking up a little something about family at the very tail end of your, your reading from your heart. 
So I wonder if there is a heartfelt connection to a family member. Um, it feels like um, there might have been a lot of judgment or something. It feels like something's ready to be healed with this family member, with an ancestor. For some of you, I'm getting that the ancestor has passed on. So I wonder if you were concerned about being judged um, for moving on from certain people. And I'm getting a really traditional feel from this person. So it could be that they didn't believe in, you know, separating from somebody. Um, and I feel like they're stepping forward right now to express to you that they love you. And it's not like... You know, that's what they believed in this particular lifetime. That doesn't mean that that's true. And that they want to help you move forward in the biggest, brightest, and most beautiful way possible. And that they're sorry if they caused um, any difficulties with letting go or moving forward in a way that felt really good to you. Ooh, okay. So a little channeled spirit message for you at the very end of group number three. Those were your messages. If you chose the um, Amazonite crystal, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are interested in the heart healing session, we are about to start that, start that but so stick around if you are. Um, otherwise, I'm sending you tons of love and light and I will see you next time. Bye. Welcome, welcome to your heart healing session. For those of you who stuck around for this, I am opening the sacred space for us. I really felt strongly that spirit wanted me to open my heart this week um, and offer a heart healing. Part of that is vulnerability. So I am going to share something with you that I've been quite private about. Um, I've actually had some health scare recently, about two weeks ago. And at the moment, I am wearing a monitor to um, figure out if, if there might be something going on um, with my actual heart. So um, I kind of retreated for a while to process this information and, and spirit kind of tapped me on the shoulder and was like, hey, you're really in this heart healing energy. This could be really powerful to share if you're willing. And that means that I need to do it <laughs> when my spirit guides bring it up like that. So if you are um, going through something similar and you need to talk about it, um, I am definitely here for you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just here to be vulnerable and be seen with you. Okay. So I've also invited my inner child to come to this session as well. If you are open to receiving um, healing energy for your heart, um, all you have to do is affirm, I receive healing energy from Meredith in this moment, and it will be. So I will ask for your sacred permission to connect to your energy at this time. For those of you who said yes, let's just take one mindful breath together. I know if you watched the beginning, we've breathed a lot, but you know, the heart beats, it wants, um, it just has a rhythm. Um, and the breath is very rhythmatic as well. If, is that a word? I think so. Okay, let's inhale in. <laughs> and exhale out. in and exhale out some of this will be unspoken so please feel free to get comfortable, relax as I send you Reiki healing energy. Might even practice a little shamanism, who knows? <laughs> Anything to help that heart feel lighter and brighter and truly heal for your highest good, okay? You are safe. If at any time you feel that you need to pause this video, please do so or just click off 
Anything that supports your empowerment, I am in favor of. really breathe into that heart space. 
We're removing some debris and build up blockages around the chakra. For some of you, I'm hearing that it feels like something blew up in your face. Um, but actually, I, I feel like it blew up into your heart. So, if you are ready to release that, and I sure hope you are, you're feeling safe and held enough to do that. <laughs> We're going to pick that out right now. Just allowing all of that to go. cold. So I wonder if you're either running cold or if you might be feeling some kind of presence around you at times that makes you feel cold. So we're definitely going to work on circulation. So if you could go ahead and shake your hands like this with me, we're going to get the life back in our hands. We're doing energetic work, but it's deeply tied to the physical body. Maybe even warm them up a little bit. Good. It feels good. just going to hold right here. I'm going to affirm that it is safe for you to come home. of love, always, and it's not your fault. Just allowing that fight, flight, or freeze reflex to fade and relax into Pachamama, Mother Earth.
We're gonna use a little sound healing here. So if you're drifting off, <laughs> please be aware I'm about to ring this bell. Not too, too loud. Just enough to wake that up. finish off your heart healing session, I'm going to breathe the beautiful heart-based energy of Condor Eagle, um, who inhabits the heart space for shamans. It's expansive, beautiful energy of freedom, the ability to fly wing to wing with spirit, spirit across all space and time. The healing energy of the sacred archetype is with you in your heart to support and help assist you in healing, continuing this healing process. Do a golden illumination. Really amplify and seal that beautiful healing, all that feels good and warm. Close you back up, okay. All right, sacred friends, especially if this is your first time receiving an energetic healing of this sort, please um, stand up slowly if you are um, sensitive to energy. It can really take you by surprise, drink plenty of water. Um, I recommend the use of Epsom salts tonight. If you have that, um, if you don't have a bathtub, you can dissolve the salt in a bowl of water and either um, you know, dip your hands or feet or um, even pour it over your head. It really helps to in aiding um, the release of taking that old energy off of the heart space. Um, but I will go ahead and step back from your energy at this time to close off the session, keep things really high vibrational and ethical is always my preference. Thank you so much for showing up and meeting me here at this very special session and allowing me to be vulnerable with you. And I love you so much. Um, sending you tons of love and light. Please sleep well tonight and take good, good care of yourself, okay? Take care, bye. <laughs>